The link in the description is only there to see the source material. Do not under any circumstance go to these people with the intent to be a dick. I don't support witch hunts or lynch mobbing, so don't be either. As for the subjects themselves, my video is for the purposes of criticism and entertainment. Take care and leave it. My content is not here to start drama. Please do not treat it like it is. I was initially gonna wait on recording this one, but it's kind of a short video, and it's not like I can put lore into this video, so fuck it. Here we are. So let me just be the first to say that I really didn't release anything of quality last year, and I stick by that statement pretty firmly. The worst out of those videos being back into the archives is a lot of that video was just old, outdated scripts. Grand you, not all of them were that old, let me be clear, that whole video's existence was just canned commentaries the collection. It just so happens that a lot of them were pretty old, some were newer, it happens. Point being, scripts that were made years ago and could have been better updated to fit the style of content that I do now. Maybe update anything out dated outside of names and pronouns, and even like, make sure the points were even valid. And it looks like I wasn't alone on this feeling, as our good pal Blaze the Movie Fan seems to share the sentiment that this was probably the weakest video that I released last year. However, while I agree with the overall sentiment, this commentary. We'll be skipping two and a half minutes in, as there is a fairly lengthy intro segment, and there's really not much to cover in it. I've come to make an announcement! Dark Matter is a bitch-ass motherfucker! I actually did originally watch this episode when I was a kid. I distinctly remember that I did. However, I didn't dislike it at the time. That's because I didn't know that Things Change was the finale of the show. And I don't know how anyone else could gauge that fact unless they specifically looked into it. Which you obviously seemed to not do during this review. Otherwise, you would know that things are a little hazy on the actual reason why the show was cancelled. And even if there was supposed to be a season 6 at all, given that... One of the story editors for the show had said, no, there wasn't, but a voice actor and producer said, yes, there was, and it's just, it's all murky. Point is, nobody really knows whether or not this was supposed to be the series finale or not, so we really shouldn't be looking at it from the sole basis of it being the finale, because that's, well, kind of dishonest, if I might be blunt. Hell, you even immediately after this point talk about the B-plot of the episode where a new villain was introduced, which maybe could have clued a person into the fact that this wasn't supposed to be the end of the series. Like, in fact, that's like, most of your problem with the episode. But this glaring thing that you use as a basis of your distaste didn't clue you into maybe looking into whether or not you actually had the right idea about the episode? It's sloppy work there, John. Alright, first of all, Mr. Hunter, do us address the possibility that it wasn't meant to be the final episode. Here, I'll show you a clear. If you want my theory about what this episode means, this episode was a ploy to get a sixth season. We'll write the most open-ended ending ever and make a mystery with zero answers, and we'll only be able to finish it off if you give us that final season, which backfired when they did not get that sixth season. I mean, it's just as valid as any of the other theories about this episode. At the top of that, whether it was the intention or not, this was still the fucking finale. So it makes sense that he would judge it as such. True, it did wind up being the finale at the end of the day. I'm not saying it wasn't. In fact, that would be blatantly false if I did. I was just saying that Inter was reviewing it on the basis of it being written as a finale, which it might not have been. It might not have meant to be, at least from what we do see within the episode. Which felt just disingenuous when most of Inter's complaints about this episode were surrounding it being a finale written as a finale. Now to address how Inter brings up later in the review his little theory, as he so blatantly puts it. I have a hard time looking at Inter talking about this possibility with any sense of sincerity from him. Even with this theory in mind, this still accuses the writers of purposely writing this without knowing whether or not there was going to even be a season 6. Inter talks about this in the sense that season 6 had not been confirmed yet, and so they still wrote it as a finale with the finale in mind, but just as a bait to get a season 6. So regardless of him bringing this possibility up, it still doesn't change the problems with Inter talking about this through his entire review as if they purposely left it on a cliffhanger. Not to mention how his theory ignores the actual evidence we have from people who worked on the show, which shows he still didn't look into things, and acknowledging that it might not have been a finale within his own review kinda just makes things worse if I've gotta be blunt. Furthermore, the mysterious Mr. Hunter is the reviewer. His responsibility is to judge something on its own merits. Research isn't necessary for a review. I mean, sure, it would make the review better, but it's not an absolute requirement. It sure 
to an extent, I get that. But, first of all, Teen Titans was a show with an ongoing plot. It's kind of not smart to single out an episode in a vacuum on its own merits, unless it was an episode that was detached from everything else. Of course, with that in mind, we don't know if this episode was or not. We have evidence supporting both sides, so what do you do? Technically, yes, research isn't necessarily required for a review like this, but it does come off as really sloppy if you were to, as an example, dive into the middle of an anime plot without any idea to what's going on and say the show is bad because of it. That's really all I'm saying. Do you really want to know how that thing looks like uncensored? Well, prepare for your eyes to bleed. <coughs> Seen it off? If that image doesn't make your foot go in the wrong direction, I don't fucking know what could. I think you're exaggerating quite a bit. His penis really isn't disgusting in the slightest. Gotta love that tasty subjectivity haphazardly thrown in there as if Comet Jack's opinion on the rubber hose on discount SpongeBob's taint is suddenly overblown and invalid because you just personally disagree. This does nothing to Comet Jack's point. Stop. Look, I totally get your point. I really do. And I don't have as much of a problem with pointing out that the point is objective. As I did when I made my last video thoughts episode on you. Stupid commentary rules. However, there is a problem that I have here that I need to address. You're basically commentating on an old video and judging it by today's standards. Let me explain what I mean. Back in 2010, nobody fucking cared and people made subjective points in commentaries. And sure, sometime after that, people did start caring and found it problematic. However, it wasn't pointed out constantly in commentaries until the summer of 2016. And guess when Crystal Andrews video was made? That's right, fucking January of the same year. And obviously such nobody cared back then, it wasn't considered that big of a deal. This is the prime example of digging through old videos to judge them by today's standards. Alright, so we're going to ignore the part where this is old commentary scripts, the video, just for a second, because I want to point out, it's still subjective. It still doesn't do anything to Comet Jack's point, and just because it's something that people point out more often nowadays, would not change the problems with the video from back then. The age of a video doesn't suddenly validate a point or excuse a problem's existence. If a problem is still there, a problem is still there. Hell, you even said it yourself that people started acknowledging problems with subjective points later the same year of Crystal's video. And with Crystal Andrew's point, the problem is still there. The only thing that I would change nowadays is how I would have addressed the point from a retroactive viewpoint instead of a more present one when I had initially wrote the point. But again, that came with the territory of how sloppily put together this video was, and I'm not about ready to defend that shortcoming. So I wound up coming up with a counterpoint to this mentality. What if the video in question has problems stemming from outdated information? Well, in this case, the video would have a bit of a shield, because with newer information on a subject, that information would not have been known at the time of the initial video. So in that sense, the point would be unfair, and... At that point, we could say the video has, like, an age shield. But if it's just based around argumentative skills, like the chain surrounding Wooldor's penis and drawn together, that still wouldn't excuse Crystal's point being flawed. This is just a minor addendum, but, like, I think it's an important one to make regardless. Just in case people want to bring up that, uh, that counterpoint. You might as well go a step further. You might as well download the video from all the way back in 2010. Just to say throughout that the point is subjective so it doesn't argue anything. Don't tempt me. I actually do have some videos from back in the day I take issue with. What you can get for $500, you can buy yourself a freaking iPhone 7. Not the iPhone 7S, not the iPhone 7S Plus, but the iPhone 7. Well, true, a phone is a very useful device that can perform a lot of different functions, so it would probably be a better idea to spend money on that than a video game console. Did, did you just cut in to agree whilst adding virtually nothing to Jedi's video? But why then? Well, it could be the same reason as I do it, to point out a positive aspect of the video. I mean, sure, he didn't really add anything, and I do see how that can be seen as a problem. But there is one point I made in my stupid commentary rules video which I still stand by. Pointing out positive aspects of a video is just as important as criticizing it. I know a lot of people don't agree with me on that, which is fine, but this is just my opinion. Again, Blaze, contrary to popular belief, I don't have an issue with pointing out positives to a video. I've done it before. 
It just kind of pads out the video with unneeded fluff when that's all you're doing. If you can't really expand upon a point in a positive way, just cutting in to say I agree doesn't really do anything to a discussion, because the nature of these videos is critical inherently, and while there is a thing called positive criticism, there's still an importance to be able to expand upon the ideas of positivity so an individual knows what they're doing right. I guess to put it in another way, cutting in to say I agree or you're correct without any further elaboration is comparable to saying I disagree or you're wrong without any further elaboration. It just, it doesn't really add anything to the discussion. But you are free to point out positives, generally. You pissed all over Ripple Star. Pissed. Since it just screams doing a commentary for the sake of doing a commentary. And trust me when I say, doing a commentary for the sake of doing one really doesn't work out since most of the time, it results in something subpar at best. Key, we all do commentaries for the sake of doing commentaries. What the heck do you mean? Like, yeah, we're gonna bring up points of debate and critique and some of us will go on to photopack production. But at the end of the day, we're still doing commentaries because we want to, not because we have to. Regardless, the problem shouldn't come in with how much substance there is to cover in Halo Fan's video, but with how Ward and Sean are covering it. Alright, I don't think you understand what Keyblade means by doing a commentary for the sake of doing a commentary. I mean sure, we all do these videos for fun, no one is disputing that. However, if you have absolutely no motives to making a commentary and are only doing it because you want to talk about a video, that can lead to making a very low quality video as a result. Okay, but how does that change my point? You literally just said that your commentary on Smosh was bad because you said nothing of substance, showing that the problem with your video was the execution, not the motive behind it. My point is that you can make a commentary on a whim, and if executed properly, can be pretty good, regardless of motive. It's just how it's done is the important aspect to look at. It kind of goes without saying that a bad idea can be executed beautifully, and as such, the opposite can be true. You could have a strong drive or motivation to do a video, and if executed poorly, will come off as pretty bad. See just about any of my controversial commentaries for examples of that, including this one, probably. The primary example of what I'm talking about is my video thoughts episode on s'mores stuck in a toilet. In that video, I said absolutely nothing of substance and only made random comments that added nothing of value to the discussion. And the commentary was fucking terrible as a result. Keyblade's point is that you have to have true motives to make a video. You can't just make a video for the hell of it. That was my video thought series, I always have true motives to making a video. It's usually because I have something interesting to say about that specific video. And I want to discuss it. Now to clarify, I know there is more to your interjection than just that. And the rest of your points are fine honestly. But I am not addressing your interjection as a whole. I'm just addressing that one specific point you made towards Keyblade Master. That's fair, but as stated before, I still find this mentality flawed. You'd basically be getting onto someone's case for not instinctively thinking a video is a bad idea to cover, which isn't really fair to anyone who wishes to do these kind of videos. Anyway, that's about the end of the commentary. Blaze goes on to give me way more appraisal than I realistically deserve, and just kind of says that this video is weak sauce, which again, I agree with. Back into the archives was a decent idea, like I don't hate the concept of looking back at old videos, dusting off your points and maybe sharing them to the world. God knows I have a ton of other commentary sources I could do that with, and probably might in the future at some point. But, eh, I just think copy and pasting from my scripts was probably not the way to go about doing this kind of video. It's definitely my least favorite video that I released last year. Anyway, that's me. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this was kind of a chiller, more relaxed video, especially in comparison to everything else I've released thus far. And what I've got planned in the future is probably a lot bigger than this. So I'll see you then. Have a good day and take care.